Magandang magandang umaga po sa ating lahat, mga kapatid sa Panginoon. Tayo pong lahat ay tumayo at sabay-sabay po nating palakpakan ng ating Panginoon. Maging yung mga kapatid po natin na sa kanikanyang tahanan, magandang araw po sa ating lahat. Praise God. Ang sabi po ni David in Psalm 34 verse 3, O magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt His name together. Alam niyo po ba, kung kailan po yan sinabi ni David at that time na yung kanya mga kasama po doon po sa cave of Adulam, they are all indebted, distressed, and they are all discouraged. Pero yun ang binanggit po ni David. Sapagat po para kay Haring David, walang dahilan o anumang sitwasyon sa ating buhay na hindi natin iangat ang pangalan ng ating pong Panginoon. Yung pong word niya is magnify. Dapat ang nakikita natin sa panahon natin ngayon ay ang ating pong Panginoon. Hindi po ang anumang krisis, hindi po ang anumang pandemic o anumang pong sitwasyon ng ating buhay. Amen? Ating tatapusin po ang 2020 that we are all magnifying the name of the Lord. And as we start the service, let us open our Bibles in the book of Matthew chapter 28 from verse 16 to verse 20. Matthew 28, verse 16 to verse 20. Ganito po ang naksaad. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Tayo lahat ay yumuko at tayo po ay manalangin. Lord, we thank you for your promise that you will always be with us even to the end of the age. It means even today you are with us. Your mere presence is an encouragement to everyone. We feel the peace of God in our hearts. We just can feel, Lord, the empowerment of your Holy Spirit today. And even the grace of God sustaining us to continue the ministry that you have provided for all of us. Right now, we are ready to worship you. Sasambahin ka namin ang buong puso. We will magnify the Lord with all the people watching today. And Lord, sa araw na ito, wala po kaming ibang ibabandila, pararangalan, at itataas kundi ikaw lamang. Even in the midst of any situation that we are in, Lord God, we are deciding today to worship you from the heart. Tanggapin mo ang aming mga papuri, ang aming mga pagsamba, at salamat din sa kapangyarihan ng iyong salita na siyang aming maririnig ngayon, na siyang lalong magpapaangad ng aming pananampalataya at lalong lalalim ang aming pong relasyon sa inyo. Salamat po sa pangalan ng aming Panginoon Jesus. Ito po ang aming dalangin na lahat po ay magsabi ng Amen and Amen. Let's continue to clap our hands to the Lord. Let's continue to shout our praise to Him. Amen. We praise you, Jesus. The herald angels sing glory to the newborn King. It's on earth and mercy my God and sinners
exalted today. You are worthy of our praise. Worthy to be honored, oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lahat po ng mga anak ng Diyos magsabi ng malakas na amen. Hallelujah. Bago po tayo maupo, Pagbigyan niyo po ako, five seconds lang po, pwede bang ipakita po ninyo yung ngiti po ninyo sa katabi niyo. Pakialis lang po yung mask po. Five seconds lang po. Kasi hindi nakikita po yan. Yung mga nasa bahay, walang problema na po. Ngitian lang po. The count of five. Five, four, three, two, one. Praise God. At pag-iwagayway naman yung kamay dyan, sa mga medyo malayo po sa atin, we will not let this uh, pandemic hinder our expression of love and unity. Amen ba? Praise the Lord. Tayo po ay makakaupo na. At uh, handa natin ngayon, ihanda natin ang ating pong mga kaloob sa Diyos. This is part of our praise and worship to God. Let's uh, bow our hands and close our eyes. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you that you are the source of everything that we have. Even the ability that we need for us to acquire wealth, yam po ay inyo pong ipinangako na patuloy na ipagkakalub nyo po sa inyo po mga anak. Kaya karapat dapat na ikaw ay aming purihin at sambahin sa araw-araw na ikaw ang siyang nagkakalub ng aming pangangailangan at ang pagpapahayag ng aming pag-ibig sa inyo at para sa inyo pong gawain kami po'y magkakalub ngayon pong oras na ito. At alam namin malaki ang tulong nito sa ikalalaganap pa ng kapangyarihan ng iyong salita at sa ikaliligtas ng maraming kaluluwa. Salamat po at pagpalain ninyong lahat ng mga negosyo, lahat ng mga trabaho, lahat ng gagawin ng aming mga kamay. Sa pangalan ng aming Panginoon mo aming dalangin, ang lahat may magsabi ng Amen and Amen. Very important announcement po. Kahit meron po tayong gawain po ng umaga at hapon ngayon pong Sunday, tuloy na tuloy po ang ating simbang gabi at 6.30. Mamaya pong gabi, magkita-kita po tayo. At yung pong hindi po makakarating, meron din po tayong online simbang gabi. Alam niyo po, wala pong overdosed sa pangangaral ng salita ng Panginoon at pagtanggap sa salita po ng Diyos. Meron po mga nag-attend na po kanina po ng uh, 5.30 in the morning at nandito, ko po, nandito po kayo ngayon at mamaya ay magkita-kita tayo muli at uh, talaga pong aangat yung ating pong faith sa ating pong Panginoon. Kayo po ba ay nakahanda na ngayon pong oras na ito para makinig ng salita po ng ating Panginoon? Kasi po very excited na po yung ating pong tagapagsalita. Praise God! Tinatawagan na po natin Dito po sa harapan ng ating pong speaker, Pastor Herbert Supan. Palakpakan po natin ang Panginoon sa buhay po ng ating kapatid. Good morning! Hallelujah! Ah, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas na. Amen. Raise God. Kaya po na naririto, silipin niyo yung katabi niyo. Walang shake hands. Walang beso-beso. Batin niyo. Happy. Ah, Merry Christmas. Tignan niyo, napakaganda na mga katabi niyo. Merry Christmas po. Amen. Advance, sabi niyo here. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise God. Tayo po ay uh, sumandaling yung mugo at manalangin. Sa pangalan po ng aming Panginoong Yesus, we declare the power of the blood, the authority of the Holy Spirit all over this place, sa bawat tahanan, sa bawat sasakyan, sa bawat lugar 
na kung saan kasama pong sumasamba sa inyo. Let your will be done. Let your kingdom come today. To the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. And everybody will say, Amen. Okay. Every time I attend a service, every time I hear a message, pag upo ko, I pray to God, Lord, speak to me through the message, and I will obey. Laging ganun. Sometimes yung message Alam ko na, pero iba yung dating. Sometimes it's a fresh revelation. To keep the fire, para mapanatili yung lumalagong relasyon sa Panginoon, napakagandang palagi nating idinadala. Lord, speak to me. Lord, I want to hear from you. I will obey. Okay, so sit down, relax. Are you ready to hear from the Lord? Yes. Ang sabi ni David Jeremiah, All the Christmas presents in the world are, not, are worth nothing without the presence of Christ. Sabi naman po ni A.F. Wells, take out Christ out of Christmas and December becomes the bleakest and most colorless month of the year. Ang Life Research Universal, sabi po niya, the most important part of Christmas is the first six letters, Christ. Si John R. Rice ang sabi niya, you never truly enjoy Christmas until you can look up into the Father's face and tell Him you have received His Christmas gift. And the greatest Christmas gift is our Lord Jesus Christ. Sabi po ni Rick Warren, the purpose of Christmas, bakit si Jesus ay naipanganak? Sabi niya, una, to erase the misconception of God. Ang Diyos, na hindi nakikita, ay nagkatawang tao. Kaya napakaganda po nung Ginagawa natin pag-aaral sa atin po nga simbang gabi. Kasi it is the character of Christ. No? Hindi na pwede pang ma-misunderstand o magkaroon ng pagkakamali kung sino ang Diyos because God became flesh through Jesus Christ. We have a complete, clear concept of who God is through Jesus Christ. Now we are studying His characters every night. Ito pala yung Diyos na ating sinasamba. Pangalawa, to express the love of God. Wow, there is no season greater than Christmas time na ang mga tao ay punong-puno ng pag-ibig. Pangatlo po, to bring salvation para magdala ng ating kaligtasan. Ang sabi ng isang author, the most glorious reason we exist is the proclamation of the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. The good news that brings salvation. The good news that brings blessed hope, assurance of salvation. Ang ating pong pinaka-teksto ay nasa Matthew chapter 28, verses 16 to 20. Nabasa na po natin kanina. Binasa ni Pastor Phil. 
Pero bago natin babasahin to, sesegway lang ako. Uh, <coughs> isa sa napakagandang pagnyayari, kasi paalis na po tayo sa 2020, ano? Isa sa pinakamagandang mangyayari at nangyari na babalikan mo sa 2020, sa 2020, dun naligtas ang mahal mo sa buhay. Amen. Pangalawa, sa 2020, dun mo nakita yung sarili mo na na-reveal pa yung mga pagkukulang mo. That's why it is your prayer, Lord, change me. Baguhin pa po niyo ako. At isa pang matinding nangyari sa 2020, kahapon po, si Pastor Stephen Sion Gopiao Sun ay na-ordained. So, congratulations sa atin pong Pastor Reverend Stephen Uh, Sion Gopia Sun. Sige po, palakpakan po natin ang ating Panginoon. Nakabless po si Pastor Sai. We are so much blessed. Gustong gusto po namin siyang kasama. Uh, noong pong buhay pa po si Bishop, pag makita kami, sabi niya, blami kapatag kayo nga ng, <laughs> ng Bishop. O bakit po? Kasi kano, pareho kayong pogi. O oh, yan. Hindi, sabi niya, pareho kong madagul. <laughs> Congratulations po sa atin pong uh, Reverend Stephen John Supan. Okay. Ang Matthew chapter 28 verse 16 to 20, ilalagyan po natin ng title, ang message ngayon, na Jesus Final Matching Order. Jesus Final matching order. Pagka sinabing matching order is authoritative order. A continuous order. Important order. At ito po yung pinakahuling utos ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo bago siya bumalik sa langit. The Lord Jesus Christ in this context ay makita natin na siya ay muling nabuhay, namatay, muling nabuhay, para iligtas tayo sa ating mga pagkakasala. After three days, He rose again. Sa kanyang paghahanda sa pagbabalik sa langit, kinausap niya ang mga disipulo, balik kayo sa Galilea, magkita tayo doon. At yun nga ang ginawa nila. Sa so verse 17, may mga naniwala at may mga nagduda. Ay, hindi ko kinu-question yung mga nagdududa kasi first time nilang may experience yung patay, <laughs> mabubuhay uli. So sabi sa verse 17, some of them believe, some of them ay nagdatout pa. Jesus' final words bring into the focus everything the gospel of Matthew and the Christian life is all about. Listen to this. If you misunderstand or fail to apply what Jesus in these verses is teaching, then to a large extent, You have missed the whole point of Christianity. We commonly refer to this passage as the Great Commission of the Lord Jesus Christ. Or Jesus' final matching orders. Alam po nyo, kami po ng mga pastor dito sa church, it is our prayer And it is our constant watch that our church will not just be doctrinally sound, but also missionally faithful or passionate with our mission. With this study, we will focus sa very important koma ng Panginoon in, in three simple points. Una, Jesus' authority. Pangalawa, 
Jesus assignment. Pangatlo, Jesus assurance. Tignan po natin yung una. Jesus authority. Verse 18. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given complete authority in heaven and on earth. Ang paunang pananalita ng ating Panginoong Jesus ay all authority is given to me. He wants us to know that He has total authority. This means the right to exercise power. Alam po nyo, nung siya'y magkatawang tao at nabuhay sa mundo, ay kanyang kusang loob itinabi ang kanyang kapangyarihan. He was fully God, yet He is fully man. Ngayong siya'y inahandang bumalik na sa langit, He reclaimed His full authority. All authority means that Jesus can do anything. If we believe that Jesus has the right to call the shots, it means that when Jesus tells us something that's final, that settles it, it is done. We are under His authority in the local church. He also has authority in our personal lives. Sabi po ng isang author, nothing great has ever been achieved except by those who dared to believe that God inside them was superior to every problem. Jesus said, all authority is given unto me. Pangalawa, Jesus assignment. Makakatulong po kung panonoorin po natin ang short video ng ito. Quick, what's the first Bible verse you think of when I say Great Commission? It's probably Matthew 28, 18 through 20, right? You know, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always, to the end of the age. Matthew 28 is the flagship of the Great Commission, and it's an important part of our Christianity today. But it may be even more important than you realize. There is a driving force behind the Great Commission that is often ignored, and it makes our witness far more pivotal. What is this driving force? What is the heart of the Great Commission? It may surprise you to find out that the heart of the Great Commission is actually a vision about Jesus from Daniel chapter 7. The prophet Daniel, who at the time was exiled in Babylon, received a rather alarming vision of the future. He saw a snapshot of the rest of human history featured by four different animals, each representing one nation that would rule over the entire world. But as unstoppable as each nation became, they were all soon overthrown by one like a son of man. To him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom that all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. This is the climactic moment of human history, when Jesus is inaugurated as the undisputed king of the cosmos. So what does this future coronation have to do with the Great Commission? Well, Matthew shows us in chapter 28. All authority was given to Jesus, just like all authority was given to the Son of Man. All nations are impacted by the Great Commission, just like all nations are impacted by the reign of the Son of Man. And Jesus anticipates the hope of the end of the age, just like Daniel anticipates the hope of the end of the age. This, and much, much more, tells us one thing. Matthew 28, 18 through 20 is reenacting Daniel's vision of Jesus, the Son of Man. This means the heart of the Great Commission is the exhaustive victory of God's Son. Every time we participate in it, from evangelism and baptism to discipleship and teaching, we are rehearsing the future triumph of our King with the transforming power of His Gospel. The future reign of Christ, then, compels us to do our part in the Great Commission. We long to see Christ King, and so we embody this hope until He reigns. 
So every time na tayo po yung nagdi-disciple, every time na tayo nag-win soul, every time we obey this great commission, hindi lang po dahil gusto nating maibsan yung paghihirap nila and to experience the power of God. Hindi lang para ma-experience nila yung amazing love ni Lord. Hindi lang para sila ay mailigtas sa eternal punishment in hell. Hindi lang para ma-experience nila yung abundant life. Hindi lang para ma-experience nila ang power of the Holy Spirit. Sinabi dito, pagka tayo nag-win souls, nag-evangelize, nagtuturo, nagbabaptize, we are preparing for the kingdom of God. Kaya nga, pag nag-disciple ka, hindi, ang tingin natin na hindi lamang madagdagan yung number sa cell group mo. Because every time you win so, disciple someone, that is a preparation to the reign of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is an advancement sa paghahari ng ating Panginoong Yesus. Ganong kahalaga ang Great Commission. Kaya nga wag mo sabihin, napakarami ko nang na-disciple, napakarami ko nang na-win soul, okay na ito. No! Napakarami pa pong dapat i-disciple in preparation to the coronation of our Lord Jesus Christ as King of Kings. Ang sarap na, no? magiging kabahagi ka ng mga pag-aharihan niya, pero nahanda mo na sila kasi na-disciple na, ha? na-fit na sila sa kingdom ni Lord. That's why in Matthew 6.33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Nag-preach po ako last Sunday sa outreach po natin sa Bula. Ang tinanong ko po sila, gaano tayo ka-obedient sa Matthew 6.33? Alam natin lahat. Gano'n tayo ka obedient? Tatanong po ako ngayon. Alam na po natin yung tinuturo kong ito eh. Gaano tayo ka obedient sa Matthew chapter 28 verses 18 to 19? Gaano tayo ka seryoso sa Great Commission? Siguro madaling sagutin yan sa pamamagitan ng pagsagot sa tanong na Patapos na yung 2020, ilan yung naligtas dahil sa'yo? Ilan ang nagbagong buhay? Ilan ang na-disciple? Ilan yung lalong naging kagaya ni Kristo through you? Because you have win souls, you have make disciples, naging bahagi ka ng water baptism, at nagturo ka. Basahin ka po ulit. Matthew 28, verse 18. Jesus came and told His disciples, I have been given complete authority in heaven and on earth. Ang linaw, ano po? Ang linaw. On that basis na nasa kanya lahat ng authority, 19, therefore, go. Grabe yung authority niya. Therefore, go. Hindi daw ito great omission. Ito'y great commission. <laughs> Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations. Hindi lang Pilipinas. Bansa ang mga kapatid. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, and uh, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey All the commands I have given you. So verses pung ito, God has given us four assignments. Number one, go therefore, win souls. Number two, make disciples. Number three, baptizing them. Number four, teaching them to obey. Nakikita po natin ang prinsipyo nito. Every Christian has their part to play in fulfilling the Great Commission. Lahat po tayo may bahagi. Now, look at this. 
God does not put an age limit in fulfilling the Great Commission. Walang edad. Yung ba, sabi nila, naku, napakatanda ako na isa, saba pa ba niyo ako sa winning souls and makes... Ay, opo! Yung mga apo niyo. Yung mga apong lola lang ang pinapakinggan at hindi mga tatay. Evangelize them! Sa katunan, mas maraming yung karanasan, mas maraming katotohan ang na- naipon na pwede niyong ituro. E pastor, social distancing. Oh, marami na mga lola ngayon marunong gumamit ng uh, gadget. Parang si mami, di ba? Si mami tita, kapisan ka, meron siyang pinopost, di niya alam na ipopost niya. <laughs> Walang limit na edad. Lahat tayo gagamit ni Lord to win souls and make disciples. Isang niya, go therefore. That means, Win souls or evangelize. Alam po nyo, at the age of 10 years old, tinanggap ko sa Jesus as Lord and Savior. Pero, pabalik-balik po ako at nag ako, ang motive ko, hindi po si Jesus. At that time, hindi po si Jesus. Hindi para ma-experience, ha? hindi para makilala siya, hindi para mag-grow. Mirienda. <laughs> Alala ko po noon, si the bishop hong pumupunta doon, galing ng uh, Angeles. Ano pa si ng nanay ko, ba't si bishop sabi niya, parang yung pantalo niya hindi nagbabago. Corderoy. Ayan pala, yun lang ang pantalo niya. <laughs> Pero dahil sa kanilang pagtsatsaga, ako po ngayon ay pastor. Kaya kung meron kayong mga anak, mga pamangkin, na edad 8 hanggang 14, ipasok na yun sa cell group. Oho! Huwag yung sabihin naglalaro pa, 10 years old. Nagtsaga sila sa akin. At that time, hindi ako seryoso. Hindi ko pa kinilala ang supreme authority ni Lord sa aking buhay. Alam po ninyo, the Great Commission falls apart if you... Ito pala. The Great Commission falls apart if you cannot solve the question of personal authority of Jesus in our life. His final matching order will have no effect in your daily Behavior. Sabi po ng sang author, evangelism is not what we tell people unless we tell what we tell is totally consistent with who we are. It is who we are that is going to make the difference. If we do not truly enjoy our faith, nobody is going to catch the fire of enjoyment from us. If our lives are not totally centered on Christ, we will not be Christ bearers for others. No matter how pious our words. Is Jesus Christ the supreme authority in our lives? Is Jesus Christ the Lord of our lives? Nasusunod po ba bilang Lord of our lives yung gusto niya sa ating buhay? Alam niyo, minsan meron po akong pinagbabati, nag-away po sila. On the process ng aking pagbabati, 
Pareho daw kristyano yan, ha? On the process ng pagbabate, tumayo yung isa, sabi niya, ay, pastor! Nga, ano? Tumayo! Eh, na ako pa kristyano, nga, ano? Me, kuyo. Hindi na daw sa kristyano. At <laughs> iminaksi niya ang kanyang taga, pagiging tagasunod ni Kristo para lang mapanatili yung galit sa puso niya. Where is the Lordship of Christ then? Where is the authority of Jesus? Sabi nga ni Pastor Carmel na kagabi, sino yung hindi natin matanggihan sa ating buhay? Dapat daw ang hindi natin natatanggihan sa ating buhay si Jesus kasi siya ang may complete authority. Siya ang Lord of our lives. Ha? Ngayon kung tumubok ang puso mo, at alam mong mali kasi hindi siya kristyano, at in-entertain mo siya, o mas Panginoon siya sa buhay mo kesa si Lord sa buhay mo. Wala pong power ang pagsishare natin ng gospel. Kung sa buhay natin, hindi nasusunod yung gusto ni Lord. Pag sinasabi mo, kristyano ka, at uuwi ka, at tumitira, at tumotoma ka pa rin, alam mo namang masama, eh where is the Lordship of Christ then? Hanggang ngayon, meron ka pang karelasyon na iba, where is? Ewan ko ba, paano mangyayari? Kristyano daw, pero may kapit. If, if the Holy Spirit is within you, hindi ka makakatulog. May conviction. Yun lang magmura ka o magsinungaling. Ngayon, kung reluctant ka lang at kahit gumagawa ka ng kasalanan at eh, hindi ka nakakonsensya, baka wala pa ang Holy Spirit. O baka sobra ka ng may sakit at hindi mo nabaramdaman yung pain. You need miracle healing. Restoration o nasanay na sa preaching, nasanay na lang sa service. Wala ng life. Wala ng passion. Wala ng joy. How can you share Jesus Christ? Kung ikaw mismo, hindi ka excited kay Jesus Christ. Isa, may nagsumbong po sa akin. Pastor, sabi niya, ano, yung pong isang kapatiran, mag evangelize po kami sana sa opisina. Eh, sabi ng mga katrabaho niya, eh, yung kasama niyo, sabi, siya ang pinakamasungit, siya ang pinakamasarili, siya ang pinakamakapride, siya ang pinakabulakbol. O, paano kami sasama sa iyo, yung kasama niyo, Wala kaming makitang maganda sa buhay niya. <laughs> sabi ko, basta lang ang gagawin namin, sabi niya. May bahala kayo sa kanya. <laughs> Meron po bang ganon? Meron po ba kayong kilalang kapitbahay na kristyano siya, pero siya ang pinakaayaw sa buong community? Wow! We are not helping to the cause of our Lord Jesus Christ and we are hindering sa kaligtasan ng iba. This is the question of the Lordship of Christ in our life. Is Jesus really the Lord of my life? Huwag mong tanungin yung buhay. Ng, tanungin mo yung buhay mo. Talaga bang kinikilala ko siya ay supreme sa aking buhay? Ask yourself a question. Committed ba ako sa gusto ni Lord? God's will? God's agenda? O will ko pa rin? Dinidisplay ko ba yung supreme devotion at delight ko kay Jesus at nakikita ng mga tao basta patungkol kay Jesus, masaya ako? Is Jesus the number one priority in my life? In my decision? Am I committed for His righteousness? 
Nabubukay pa ako sa kabanalan. Nagpapakasanay ba ako sa kabanalan? That is the question of the Lordship of Christ. Siguro maganda po bago natin iwanan ng 2020, examine our faith. Tiyakin po natin na Jesus is Lord of our life. Pangalawa, make disciples. So in step one, I go. Step two, make disciples. No. that Jesus did not say, go and recruit church members. Niya sinabing, go and make converts. What the church needs most, our priority is to make disciples, not members. Jesus commands us to go and make disciples. Sabi ng disciples, follower of Christ. Mayroong commitment sa Lordship of Christ. The implication is that disciples are made, not born. God may call us from birth to be His children, but someone has to give us trainings to be disciples. A disciple is the one who is disciplined, who conforms to the standards and expectation of his teacher. A disciple of Jesus Christ are disciplined and are example of the righteous walk. Maganda yung sinabi ng isang author. The best way to make disciples Perhaps the only lasting way is to be disciplined yourself. Then share those discipline with others. Saying like this, well, this is what works best for me. This is what I believe. This is how I try to respond in situation like this. You can only teach what you know and what you believe and what you practice. Yung iba, ano ba yung disciples? Ang hirap-hirap yata, hindi, ang dali. Tinuruan ka magpatawad sa iyong kapwa. Dati hindi ka maroon magpatawad. Ngayon nagpatawad ka. Imbis na gaganti ka, binibless mo siya. Ang disciples doon, kung may tuturuan ka, ah, may galit ka, ah, naranasan ko na yan. Kaya palang alisin yung galit. O, kwento mo yung karanasan mo. Ako nga, dati pinagpipray ko, mabungi yung kaaway ko eh. Pero nung mabasa ko ang Biblia, wala palang repay evil to evil. Napatawad ko na siya. etong gawin mo. Yun ang discipleship. You may kwento, you may kwento-kwento, you may chismis-chismis of your experience with Jesus. Discipleship is a transfer of life. The life of Christ. Not our life. The life of Christ. na naipasa sa atin. Kung ang nanay, chismosa, <clears throat> hindi niya alam, din disciple niya yung anak niya, magiging chismosa. Yun siya. <laughs> Yun siya. Ngayon baligtad, positive naman. Ang nanay, nagdi-devotion everyday, yung anak niya, magdi-devotion everyday. Yung nanay, nagsisell group, Yung anak, magsisel group. Yung nanay, nag ng discipleship classes, si rin. Yung nanay, hindi selfish. Yung anak niya, hindi. That's discipleship. That's why our first mission, our first priority mission is our family. Sabi ni Pastor Alvin, the best use of our time is to disciple the believers. Meron tayong discipleship program. Pag naborn na kayo ng isang tao, una, ginagamit natin yung booklet, Restarting Your New Life with Jesus. 
Pagkatapos nun, life class. Tapos nun, destiny one, destiny two, destiny three, then sending. Isa pa pong paraan ng atin pong pagdi-disciple ay mentoring and training. Pero discipleship really happens in cell group. Kaya kung wala kang cell group, you miss a lot. You miss a lot. The very core, the very system of the church to disciple someone is in cell group. Small group. Pangatlo po, baptize them. Ano sabi niya? Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Ito po yung water baptism. It is an outward symbol of an inward decision of our declaration kay Jesus ako, no turning back, no turning back, final na. That, yun ang ibig sabihin ng water baptism, namatay ka na kasama ni Kristo. Pag angat mo, na-resurrect ka, kamukha ni Kristo, new life. Baptize them. Pangapat, teach them. Teach them. I like this. Teach them. So, teach them. Teach the new believers to obey. Ano po ang ating Panginoong Jesus ay sa, sa verse 20. Sabi niya, teach the new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. Our Lord Jesus Christ is our perfect example ng pagdi-disciple. Tignan natin yung isang verse. Sa John chapter 17, verse 4. Anong sabi doon? I glorify thee on earth. I have finished the work which thou hast given me that I sh- should do. Galing, ano? We glorify God on this earth. Pag tinatapos na yung ating mga assignments. Kagaya ni Jesus. Ano bang assignment ni Jesus? Sa John 17, Verse 4, 7, I have given them thy word. Nagturo si Jesus. Kaya alam niyo mga kapatid, ang sarap magturo, ang sarap magpreach. Kahit araw-araw, magtuturo, basta word of God, yes! Teach them. Kaya tama, Pastor Phil, walang overload sa word of God. Because this is one of the matching order of God. Teach them. Puno sa book of Acts, everyday yung cell group nila. Kaya kung everyday nakikinig ka ng, ng simbang gabi at ikaw excited, normal ka, normal ka. Pag everyday nakikinig ka ng word of God at nagsasawa ka na abnormal ka, <laughs> may sakit ka, may sakit ka. Hallelujah! Teach them. Huh? Yung ang marunong mag... Exercise, magsumba-sumba kung paano gaganda yung katawan. Eh, excited silang kumikembut-kembut doon para, oh, itong gawin mo, ah, itong gawin mo. Eh. Ano pa kaya yung babaguhin yung buhay ng tao at ang salita ng Diyos ang ating tinuturo? Teach them! Teach them! Teach the word of God. I have given them thy word. Today, I have given you, binibigay ko ang salita ng Diyos. God's final matching orders. And I'm happy in doing this. I'm excited. I love what I am doing because I give glory to God through the teaching of the Word of God. According to the Great Commission, there is no true Christian who is not called to make disciples. Pangatlo. Jesus assurance. Ang sabi niya, and lo, I am with you always. Hindi naman ang assurance na ito. Ha? Sasamahan kita. Always. Sino yung sasamahan ni Lord? Sila na nag win souls. Make disciples, 
sila na nagturo ng Word of God at naging bahagi ng water baptism. And lo, I am with you always. Anong nagiging resulta nito? The best way to experience increasing joy is to be engaged in our mission. Alam ko may PowerPoint ako dyan eh. Nahuli ka, sister. Mag-focus ka sa trabaho mo. The best way to experience increasing joy is to be engaged in our mission. Wala ba dyan? Wala? Ah, sorry. Sorry. Ako nagkamali. Patawari. Pinapatawad mo ba ako? Okay. Sorry. Sorry. I love you. Yan. Kala ko na ilagay ko. Kasi ako pala ang mali. So the best way to experience increasing joy, alam niya yung iba, hindi na nag enjoy sa kanilang pagiging kristyano. Bakit? Hindi sila engaged sa mission. Na born again lang. Walang question doon. Na born again lang. Pero hindi sila active in doing the Great Commission. Ano sabi ng isang author? A free-flowing river purifies itself and is alive with life. So also is the Christian who becomes involved with others in sharing the gospel. Amen? That Christian will discover the reason of his or her existence. Being involved in the ministry of a witness is essential to finding the fulfillment we desire as humans. Ano pa po ang impact ng law? I am with you always. Siyempre naman, we can expect a miracle. Today, I'm expecting miracle sa bawat isa na maniniwala that nothing is impossible with Jesus. We expect healing, salvation, deliverance, transformation, regeneration whenever we win souls and make disciples. In conclusion, I challenge you to commit to the Great Commission. Maaring nag-commit ka na. But this time, Lord, ile-level up ko po. Hindi lang ako basta mag-win soul. Hindi lang ako basta mag-disciple. I will be intentional. Si siguraduhin ko, Panginoon, na susunod ako sa Great Commission. Commitment to the Great Commission. Pangalawa, win people and raise up disciples always. Pangalawa, pray daily and pray powerfully always. Pangadlo, get a vision of the world. Get a nation. Pray for, a, pray for it daily and every year. Get out of your comfort zone and engage in the vision. Go make disciples of all nations. Sino po dito yung mayroon kang regular ling pinagpipray na bansa? Kasama yan. Ask the Lord, what will be the mission? What will be my focus in prayer? Not just Pilipinas, kundi ibang bansa. And be engaged in the vision. Nung ako po'y bagong mananampalataya, sa kabila po na tinuturo ni na Bishop Hong na mag-win souls, mag-evangelize, hindi ko nagagawa. Uh, simply because nahihiya ako. Alala ko nga noon, nung nagbigay kami ng trucks distribution, yung polyetos, dinala kami dyan sa Capitol, Capitol Ground. Tapos binigyan kami ng dig gaganong kadaming trucks. Sige, mag tayo, distribution. Hindi ba mag evangelize ha? <laughs> Dahil na uh, hiya po ako, natatakot ako. Yung mga trucks ko, binulsa ko. At pumunta ako sa isang sulok, nagtago ako. Hinintay ko silang matapos. <laughs> nang matapos at nagbalik ang saya-saya nila ang dami nilang kwento <laughs> nakikitawa-tawa lang wala akong experience eh. <laughs> mukhang masaya sila sabi ko, ba't sila masaya? nakakaya sabi ko <laughs> nagkaroon ako ng breakthrough sa pagsishare ng gospel nung mabaptize ako ng Holy Spirit 
April 1984. Wow. Simula noon, naging walang hiya ako. Bisayin, <laughs> tatayo sa palengke, tatayo sa bus. Maalala ko po noon, Pastor Phil, doon sa, sa palengke, dito sa downtown, mag-altar call time, may mga lumalapit sa harapan. May mga goiter, instantly gumagaling. Lalabas po kami ng mga young people noon, dadala kami ng speaker, dadala kami ng gamit. Wala man nag-uutos sa amin, talagang trip namin. <laughs> Why? Because of the fire of the Holy Spirit. Anong sabi sa Acts chapter 1 verse 8? But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses telling people about Jesus, about me, everywhere. Palagi ko maaga ako natapos. Ano po? Tama, Pastor? Marano ko mayari? Ilan ko pang minuto po? Tulungan niyo ako. Baka mali ako. Dapat matapos tayo 10.30, tama? 10.10 pa lang. May 20 minutes pa. I intentionally, by God's grace, matapos ng maaga, to give room to the move of the Holy Spirit. Kasi alam ko, kahit anong naituro ko, kagaya ng experience ko, kung walang bautismo ng Banal na Spirito Santo, walang power. Sabi niya, bibigyan ko kayo ng kapangyarihan. Pagkatapos ng Holy Spirit, ay mabaptize kayo. And you will be my witnesses. Kung ikaw ay nag-attend ngayon, dito, o nag-attend online, bago mag-start ang service, sabi mo, Lord, I want fire. Parang may kulang. Parang gusto ko mag-level up. I want experience. Today, we will ask for the fire of the Holy Spirit. We will pray for baptism. We will pray for infilling of the Holy Ghost. Lahat ng mga uhaw dyan sa kapangyarihan ng Banala Spiritus Santo. This is the moment. This is the moment of miracle. La Luna, if you will say, Yes, Lord, I will win souls, I'll make disciples. You say, buhay natin ay punong-puno ng pagsunod at pagsuway. Pero sa bawat pagsunod ay may milagro. If you say, Yes, with a greater commitment in winning souls and making disciples, then the power of the Holy Spirit will flow mightily in your life. stand in the presence of God. Sa pangalan po ng aming Panginoong Yesus, Ikaw po, ang aming Diyos na buhay at makapangyarihan. Aming Ama, sa pangalan po ng aming Panginoong Yesus, we want, we pray, we long for a fresh experience with the power of the Holy Spirit. We pray for the fresh fire, for the anointing of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Nauuhaw po kami, Panginoon, sa iyong presensya. Kailangan po namin ng kapangyarihan para masunod namin ang Great Commission. We repent from all of our disobedience. We surrender our whole life to you. And today, Lord, we declare you are Lord of our lives. So, Holy Spirit, we have thine on the way right now. Touch us, fill us, baptize us in the name of Jesus.
us, Lord. sa atin dito. Meron kang napaka bigat na sitwasyon. Napaka hirap na sitwasyon. Gusto mo sanang humingi kay Lord pero you're not obeying the Lord. At sa isip mo, you do not deserve. But God is saying to you, His grace is sufficient to all of your deeds. You will receive His miracle today not because of what you have done, but because of His grace. Believe that God will give you the miracle. A miracle of healing, miracle of financial provision, miracle of deliverance, miracle of restoration and even the miracle of the baptism of the Holy Ghost hindi lubusan makakilos ang banal Espiritu Santo because you're condemning yourselves you're rejecting yourselves but the Lord has not rejected the Lord is not condemning you He loves you so much at pinili ka niya not because of who you are but because of His grace So today, believe God for a miracle. Meron po sa atin dito na you are not yet sure that you are saved. But today, you're making the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. We will sing this song again. And I want you to claim and believe. 
believe for your miracle right now. Maging sa mga nasa tahanan, let the fire of the Holy Ghost touch you right now. Yes, Lord. This is our time. We are your people. Release your grace. Release your grace. spirit, works of witchcraft, any forms of fear and depression. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke the spirit of fear. We now was the spirit of infirmities by the power of the blood of Jesus. Receive your healing. Receive your deliverance right now in Jesus' name. Hindi lamang po physical healing, Panginoon. Emotional healing, mental healing, right now, in the name of Jesus. And I impart, and I release the boldness to share the gospel. Na simula sa araw na ito, mas magiging matapang, mas magiging madalas, mas magiging active, mas magiging masipag, mas magiging on fire kami in sharing the word of God sa aming pamilya, sa aming katrabaho, kapitbahay, sa aming community, lahat ng kasama namin araw-araw, we pray, O oh God, use us to share the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And if you're here right now for the first time, may nakarinig ka ng mahal ka ng Panginoon, and you want Jesus in your heart, or maybe you're a Christian, at hindi ka sure that Jesus is your Lord, once and for all, you want to surrender all of your sin. Lahat ng bisyo, lahat ng kasalanan. You want to be totally free. We will pray a sinner's prayer and receive God's salvation and deliverance. Sumunod po tayo sa panalang ito. Sabihin po natin, Panginoong Jesus, naniniwala po ako. Mahal na mahal mo ako. Naniniwala po ako. Ikaw ay namatay sa krus ng kalbaryo para ako'y palayain sa kasalanan, sa kalungkutan, sa kamatayan, at sa impyerno. 
Panginoon, pinipili ko ang sumunod sa iyo. Pinipili ko na isuko ang aking buhay. Hinihingi ko po ng kapatawaran lahat kong kasalanan. Nais ko na ng bagong buhay. Nais ko po ng bagong spirit. Tinatanggap kita sa aking puso bilang sariling Diyos at sariling tagapaglikas. Salamat po. Naniniwala po ako sa oras na ito. Ako yung tinanggap. Ako yung pinalaya. Ako ngayon ay anak na ng Diyos. Ininadalangin ko po, Panginoon, ang bawat isang tumanggap. At ang bawat isa sa pamilyang Christ in you. Dalangin namin sa celebration ng Kapaskuhan. We do it celebration with a mission. Nasasabi namin sa Desembring ito, the rest back continue. In the name of Jesus. Salamat po, Panginoon, sapagkat alam po namin sa umaga ito, you have baptized us with the power of the Holy Spirit. Raise your hands to the Lord. The Lord bless you. The Lord give you the Lord's power. The Lord's glory be upon you. God's supernatural protection. God's fire and boldness to share the gospel be upon you. You will be a witness. You will shine. You will glorify Jesus wherever you go. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And everybody will say,